Ladies and gentlemen, I have to make a video today about Cobra Kai. So I binge watched it, all three seasons. I wasn't paying YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> so it came to Netflix, right? Season three. Obviously, I got my Ryu hoodie. It's the closest, it's the best I got. So I got you got the hoodie going and everything. Power Rangers shirt because this show is Power Rangers. This show is part. This is I said it, I made a post after I finished season three after binging the whole show up to where it's at. I made a post that I think is a pro I'm probably gonna title this video that Cobra Kai is God tier anime. Like that's that's what this whole show is. It's anime. It is it's live action anime. It's Power Rangers without the monsters. It is a god tier anime. It is so ridiculous and amazing. I can't believe it. Like it's just so freaking crazy. I've never been a big Karate Kid fan. Uh, not because I thought it was bad. I saw the first movie when you know when I was really young, and for whatever reason, it just never really latched on. It just never latched on for me. So I saw the first movie. I never saw the second one. I never saw the third one. I never saw the fourth one or the next Karate Kid. I saw the first movie. That was it. I know get him a body bag. I know the crane kick. I know, you know, you're the best around. Excuse me, which I think they might save for like the final season. They might actually throw it in. Um, which honestly, the only reason I know that song is even tied to uh, Karate Kid, oddly enough, is from like season one or two, maybe season two of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That's the theme song they use during like a training montage. And I found out later that that was the theme song tied to the Karate Kid. So I always, I always knew the song. I liked the song. And I was like, oh, that's the Karate Kid theme, which I recently found out um, You're the Best Around was actually written for Rocky Three. So like those were always the two big ones. It was I the Tiger, obviously, it's like the number one. And then You're the Best Around was the other big montage song that I knew from that era. And it turns out that they were basically, they were both written for Rocky. And then I was like, I the Tiger is a little bit better, but we can kind of slide this one off to, uh, you know, the young version of Rocky, which the first Karate Kid, if you didn't know, was actually made by the dude that did the first Rocky. Um, so it was, you know, Rocky for teens. So it, it, it oddly perfectly fit, oddly perfectly fit. But yeah, I saw the movie once. I saw it once as a little kid, never thought much of it. And that was pretty much it. That was Karate Kid for me. It was like, it's very famous. It was a very big thing. Um, you know, Ralph Macchio's like big thing is that for me personally, it was my cousin Vinny. I've seen that movie a trillion times. So if this was somehow a continuation of my cousin Vinny, I'd be all over that. You know, the two youths. I mean, that's like probably one of the most famous lines, but two youths is easy. But you know, like I'm all over that. Him like shooting the gun, all, all that good stuff. I love my cousin Vinny. Just hadn't seen the Karate Kid. I was just like, I know that's the dude from Karate Kid, but for me, he, you know, is my cousin Vinny. That's what I, you know, for Ralph Macchio, that was the movie that I had. So. Going into this, I'd always heard that the first two, I heard both seasons were good. I just, like I said, you know, I, like most people, which is why it's like the number one thing ever right now, because nobody was like, I'm paying, nobody was going to pay YouTube for YouTube, right? Even if the show was good, nobody was wasting their time on that YouTube original garbage. So it's like, I'm, you know, I'm not going to pay YouTube extra money. So it's Netflix. I'm like, I'll check it out. Why not? I love martial arts. I might as well. I, let's, I heard it's good. Let's see how good it is. It is amazing. It's one of the best things I've ever freaking seen. Like, it's so ridiculous how good this show is. It makes me love The Karate Kid. And I don't care about The Karate Kid. It never grabbed me. Like, oddly enough, all my favorite stuff is super old. Like, my favorite franchises are all things that were made before I was born. So it's Transformers, Star Wars, Ninja Turtles, uh, the only thing that's probably not is like Resident Evil and then Back to the Future is my other big franchise Those are like my top five and so most of those were all made before I was born <laughs> And it's just like for whatever reason Karate Kid just never really grabbed me. I'd seen it I don't know why it wouldn't and I guess it was just because I didn't see it at the right time Maybe because I do love martial arts So I probably would have enjoyed the movie a lot more if I saw it later in life But and the same thing with Back to the Future. I didn't see that till I was probably like a teenager it was probably the second time i ever saw it and i was just like i really like this and then that's just kind of how i got on that train so had i seen karate kid again i probably would have already been there but this show makes me want to go back it makes me want to watch all the movies i mean considering what they've done so far i feel like i have to watch all of them i feel like i i, I feel like i even have to watch the next karate Kid because i'm like I don't know, even with the way they ended season three. Full spoilers, by the way. I, I, I haven't gotten into anything because at this point, I'm just freaking out and gushing about it. But there will be spoilers, I guess, technically in the second half or whatever. But man, this show is so good. It, it's just like, it's so crazy. It's just like, okay, I knew the premise. It was like, obviously, Johnny Lawrence, the bad guy. But what if he wasn't such a bad guy? You know, there's the whole YouTube video about um, 
you know, da- Daniel being the one who was actually the villain the whole time and stuff like that. And I'm just like, and I feel like that's kind of um, gone full circle because a lot of people do not like Sam, uh, which I'll definitely talk about. Uh, but man, just just watching the show, I was like, it's so good. It's so good. The martial arts is fun to watch because it's just, you know, it's just martial arts. Like, you just like watching martial arts. And then here, you know, this is where it gets to like, you know, Power Rangers live action anime style is, um, yeah, I guess we can go, you know, full spoilers. Here we go. I like all the characters. Gotta talk. Season two is where it really hits full, full on God tier anime mode because it's like, yeah, they're doing cool martial arts. They had the tournament in the first season. Made perfect sense. They had the tournament. They have a couple of scuffles and stuff like that, right? Season two. We have a couple of scuffles. Things are getting a little intense. Crease is here, which I didn't know he showed up at the end of season one. I thought he like first came in in season three because I saw like the logo and stuff. And I was like, oh, man, that kind of sucks. It was sort of spoiled. And I thought he had like just come in. I thought that was the big thing for season three was that he had just come into the show because I hadn't seen his face anywhere. So I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. That, that sort of got spoiled for me. And then he came in at the end of season one. And I was like, oh, snap, he's been here the whole time. Like This is really intense because when I thought he first he had just come in, like it changed the whole concept of the show when he popped in at the end of season one and i was like oh this is intense already like it was i knew it was going to get crazy and then it hits the end of season two and it was so nuts and i loved every freaking second of this insanely long shot where it's just like tori who i can't stand by the way like there are people who just can't stand sam and they're just like it's all her fault i'm like this bitch is crazy this is like She's psych- She's a psycho. She is a psycho killer. She tried to actually kill her. She would have punched her in the face with that really clearly plasticky, deadly knife that she had wrapped around her knuckles. And she was going to kill this girl and punch her straight in her face and, like, blind her. And I'm like, how can you go from that scene and ever talk shit about Sam in any regard where it's like, it's all her fault. Like, even in um, season three where they were trying to, like, save the tournament and it's like, oh, it's your daughter was um, kissing her boyfriend, which I got to be honest, that made me laugh so hard because watching it, I was like, if any grown person ever says that, like, oh, it's your daughter's fault, your daughter's fault for causing, like, this crazy battle, um, it, like, it's her fault she got attacked in this crazy all-out brawl in the school because she kissed a dude that's someone who's not over some real serious stuff from their past like whoever that woman was in the background I'm like she just never got over a breakup she got cheated on because i'm like you got to get past that because there's no reason anyone on earth should be like but a logical thing is your daughter kissed her boyfriend all out brawl yo it's totally fine because when she said that i was just like you can't you can't say that and i think you're a sane human being like you got some issues you need to deal with because that made me laugh so hard i was like you can't say that, and that makes sense to me. Like that's that's got that's anime stuff. That's like that's so ridiculous that an adult human being would be like, "But your daughter kissed her boyfriend, so yeah, she should have attacked her. She should have taken the PA system from an adult, wrestled it from her hands, and said, i 'I'm coming for you, bitch, over the PA system.' You cannot have that happen in real life. And then you're like, your daughter kissed her boyfriend. That's why that happened. I'm like, you can't have that as a reason. <laughs> it's so it's so ridiculous. It's so dumb, but it's amazing. It's it's anime. It's so stupid that an adult human being could be like, your whoring little girl calls her an all-out brawl. It's so funny to me, but I loved it. I was like, that's so ridiculous to say. And then like, they're all getting shut down at this meeting and the dude's like, you know, like Danny stands up to say some stuff and then it's like, you know, it's your student that kicked him over the balcony anyway. Like, this is like, you know, you reap what you sow. And I'm like, man, you know, at least he kind of had a point. Cause like, you know, it, it was an interesting moment when he said that cause it was, um, it made me think of Spider-Man, which probably sounds super weird, but there's a scene in the first Spider-Man movie where Peter's talking to Uncle Ben. It's after he got into like the fight in the lunchroom and he punched out Flash Thompson. And so Uncle Ben is mad at him and he's talking to him. He's like, I didn't even start that fight. He's like, yeah, but you finished it. And that always stuck with me in life where I was like, man, that's an interesting thing because Peter was being bullied like he always is. But he punched that dude and he like knocked him unconscious. And Uncle Ben was like, yeah, but you finished that fight, didn't you? And it's like, dang, sometimes you do have to kind of, you know, beginning and ends like, you know, it, it takes two to tango type of thing. And it's like. He had a point, and I was like, dang, you know, it, I always think about that stuff, and I was like, that was a cool moment, and it kind of shut Danny down, it was like, damn, I, I, he, he got me, like, it was my student, but, and then that, oh my goodness, that, oh my goodness, so aside from anime, aside from Power Rangers, this junk is Star Wars now, at the end of season three, it went full on Star Wars, because we had, you know, we're going through the show, right, it, oh, man, 
So crazy. So Johnny, of course, he doesn't take care of his son. He's a deadbeat dad. He doesn't care about Robbie. Robbie ends up trying to get back at him by, you know, talking with Daniel. And then, of course, he's like, dang, this is actually kind of cool. Like, he's a cool dude. He's actually helping me out. He teaches him martial arts. So, of course, they end up being close. And it's like, you know, it, then it, it leads into, like, what the crux of this entire series is, which this whole show is based off a singular premise. I'm mad. Hold on. Let me explain. I said I'm mad. That's the whole show. That's the whole, once again, anime. That's the entire series is, I saw this. I want to explain I said I saw what I saw, and then they walk off and they fight. That's the whole series. Everything with Sam is that. It's like, well, it's a misunderstanding. I don't think it is. I could tell you how it is. I don't think it is. Martial arts. <laughs> that's, the whole, that's the whole show. Danny and Johnny, whole show. Every single time, they're like this close to being friends. Some stupid random thing happens, and they don't just talk. They don't talk. It's... It's like, I was bullied as a kid. That junk is PTSD. Admittedly, Johnny's just like, I, I lost. And then that was it. He got effed up by Crease outside of the whole tournament thing. And like, there was no bullying. He just got effed up by this crazy dude. And so it's just like, they just that weird back and forth where it's like, everything was cool. You know, like episode one, everything's fine with them, right? Like, it's like, you know, they're kind of reconnecting. Johnny, of course, is still pissed about it. Like, he hates LaRusso. Like, that's his whole thing. It's like, oh, it's LaRusso, LaRusso. So... Everything is cool. And then, of course, he's like, I'm going to you know, pick myself back up. I'm going to bring back Cobra Kai. And so Danny's like, oh, man, life is good. You know, he had this whole thing where, you know, he had the dick on his face. They got it off and he spin kick all his guts. Like, he's living it up. And it's like, boom, Cobra Kai. And it's like, as soon as, and I love how they do the flashbacks with the movies. It's such a good job. And, you know, he sees it and, like, instant PTSD where it's like, I got, you know, I was getting kneed in the stomach by skeletons and junk. I was flipped off my bike over a hill. Like, just all sorts of madness. It's just all these crazy PTSD flashbacks that he's having. And I'm like, this makes so much sense. It's so well done that it just makes sense. And then Johnny has like his weird PTSD because of Kreese and then feeling like he was the one who's the victim. And like, it just the way that they handled it back and forth. I was like, it's, it's, it's really well done. Um, I like the new kids. You know, Miguel is awesome. Hawk is just crazy. Like his, tra his transition as a character is so anime um everybody's good like sam is good you know then she has a rivalry with tori and that's crazy and it's just like this whole show is just so ridiculous every like i said the whole premise of the show is i you know if you if you just pause for like a second and a half and then we had an explanation everything's fine which is proof like they proved that in the show like four times because of um <laughs> basically our two main characters you got johnny and you got daniel every time they came together where they weren't fighting it was because they spent like two seconds where they talked it was you know when they in season one they went to the bar and everything like that like when they first go home and they find out like oh you know like i thought you were the rich kid and it was like yeah but my you know we find out you know johnny's dad was a horrible stepdad he just treated him like garbage so it's like yeah you know and, and that's kind of why he it went into uh cobra kai and so it was like it wasn't just oh his stepdad was crappy to him so he was crappy to other people to kind of get his rage out that it wasn't even rage that he had it was just like a sadness and loneliness and then that was taken and transformed into rage by crease and it was like ah the way they do that is so good because it's like he wasn't always that dude and he you know you see somebody at one point in their life and you just assume that's who they are he's the rich asshole and it's like no that wasn't it i'd had a crappy home life and then i went to try to be cooler because i wanted to do martial arts and be cool and then crease got a hold of him and he molded him into a weapon it's like that's really good that's just just so good and crease is obviously just like he's a super villain he's a straight up maniacal super genius super evil genius which you know i skipped over the star wars thing i forgot so this the whole robbie stuff right so the whole training and the robbie situation then he yo kicks Miguel over the thing, and then he takes off, then he goes to prison, and he gets out of prison. And so they have this whole thing. The two people that he saw, obviously his dad had already felt him. The one time he went to see him was when he ended up catching him hugging Miguel. So I was like, oh, well, F this dude, of course. And so, you know, he's bonded with, with Danny. Then Danny's like, hey, I, I, I don't know, I keep calling Danny Daniel. Um, but he's like, hey, I had to call the cops. This is the, this is the best way to truly help you. It, it makes everything easier. But he felt betrayed. So it was like, he lost both of them. And the only person he had left was Kreese, who gave him like that little hint when he was in juvie. Like, you know, yeah, that Miyagi-Do stuff will help you win points. But when you're in the real world, strike first. And so he does that against the bullies. And then, you know, he didn't snitch on the guy. who I feel like that guy could easily come back. And like, when he gets out, he could show up as like another person to kind of help 
uh, Cobra Kai is like, you know, we fought in prison, but, you know, they did the classic thing where, like, they fought and it was like, you didn't say anything. It was like, you know, I'm no snitch. And it was like, me neither. And so I was like, okay, cool. And I feel like that dude could easily, when he comes out, like, they both learn martial arts and then they're cool. And then they're, you know, they could both be in Cobra Kai. Um, but, like, he did that. And so then he ended up going to Crease. And then they have the, once again, anime part two. <laughs> so they go from the season two ending to the season three ending where they just straight up break into the house like they already were getting bullied all right like the miyagi Do stuff where they're getting picked on like cobra kai is just effing with them they come up to the job and it's like all right let's have a freaking abandoned laser tag fight that was a great moment in the season and then the show in general because it was just like this crazy moment it was like we're gonna get revenge sam was just pissed after everything that happened tori's you know psycho killer so she's like i want my revenge and then tori came in PTSD and I loved it I was like she was hyperventilating and then they just have Hawk and Dimitri and he's just like please don't and he's just like he's just looking like Sam help and he just snaps his arm and I'm like this show is so bokwa did he not just tell anybody Hawk broke my arm that's all he had to do like you're going to prison like we've seen juvie we know it actually exists we've seen cops at least once in the show at one of these three seasons i'm pretty sure they had a cop show up somewhere so we know they exist at some point in this series they exist but they just don't they aren't there they aren't there there's like one time daniel's wife was like hey we should call the cops they went to the cops and then you know Crease doing his super villain thing was like, oh, he already put a restraining order on you because you assaulted him. And that's when she got into the fold, which I thought was another great moment in the show where this whole thing was just like, you know, on the outside, it's like, this is ridiculous. It's a freaking karate dojo rivalry you guys have from high school. That's so stupid. And then she met Crease. And I was like, once again, that's great writing. Super anime villain comes in and she's like, this dude. Is it like, and she even said the thing where it's like, see, it's nuts when you say it out loud, isn't it? Because you just said a, a martial arts supervillain is like training kids as soldiers for a war. That doesn't make any sense. What does he, what is he talking about? What war? Does he think he's going to win the tournament and then like take over Los Angeles? Take over all of California? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense, but it's anime and it's great. So all of that is really good. Then we have the flashbacks for Crease. Also amazing. We find out literally where Cobra Kai comes from. That was genius. That was so good. I was like, it's going to be a snake pit. It's going to be a bunch of cobras. Because the dude was like, it's deep, but that's not the worst of it. I was like, there's cobras in there. It's a cobra pit. And of course it is. Because that's anime. It's a cobra pit. So wild. Such a wild series. I love this show. I can't wait for season four. And then the ending of season three. They're about to kill this dude, right? Like they they have like their grand battle. Like they they have they have the scene with Allie. Like this is another thing where I was like, dang, I feel like I should start watching the movies now before season four comes out because I'll have like that a, a greater attachment to the show. Cause for me it was like, oh, Allie was the girlfriend and it didn't it didn't really register for me like that would be a huge deal if they got the actress to come back. Cause for me it was just like, yeah, they got the actress to come back. So it was just kinda like I just assumed. But I could see like watching the show, if you didn't know, it was just like well, yeah, you don't, You wouldn't instantly assume they're just going to start bringing people back. Like, everyone assumes now that they got Silver coming back for season four. And it's like, yeah, I can see that being a big deal. You wouldn't just instantly assume that when it starts off with, like, yeah, we got Daniel and we got Johnny. And, you know, they had Daniel's mother come in. But it's like, that was season one. You know, like, it was like, yeah, you aren't going to instantly assume, like, they're going to have this person. They're going to have that person. Crease showed up at the end of the first season. It's like... Oh, they're serious. They're getting people. So for me, I was like, I, I should probably watch the movies so I can like get that greater attachment. But it's just crazy. They're just bringing people in. They do the flashback stuff. They did the stuff for Karate Kid 2. That was wild. Didn't know he went to Japan. Dead serious. Never knew he went to Japan. I had no idea that's what the second movie was about. Nobody talks about Karate Kid 2, which it's that it's that classic second movie thing, and people is people go one, three, two, and then four. Um I never knew he went to Japan. I had no idea. I, I did not know he went to Japan at all. So that blew my mind. And it was still good. It still worked. The emotional stuff was still there. Because I'm like, this dude tried to murder him. He was trying to murder this woman. Which, once again, th movie logic. You know, because I'm like, I I guess. But he literally ziplined in the middle of a play. I'm going to kill her. And then I'm going to kill you. That's like, that's crazy to me. That's anime. So then he comes back and Chosen helps him. Like, he's running into old people. Like It's just like, bam, there's my ex-girlfriend from Japan. Boom, there's my old rival who literally tried to murder me, but then actually taught me stuff because he's re related to Miyagi. So, of course, I found all this stuff out when watching the show. And so I was like, that's amazing. It's like, oh, Miyagi didn't tell you this stuff. Like, you don't know everything about Miyagi. 
uh, Miyagi Do, and I was like, oh, so, that's so good. And then he, you know, he does like the crazy fight, and it's like he's about to kill him. He did the honk. Obviously, I didn't understand that reference, so it didn't make me laugh as much. I still thought it was super funny though, because even without the connection to um, Mr. Miyagi having done that in the film, it was still a great moment where it was like clearly from the dude that tried to murder you, he like hit you with the honk, and I was like okay, this is funny. And then it's like, I've just been effing with you the whole time. I'm not an asshole anymore. And I was like, this is great. That's so silly. That's so, he was just effing with him to get like this weird version of revenge. And then it's just like, gotcha, dude. I'm cool now. And I was like, that's funny. That's just so, that's so anime. That's so ridiculous. And I loved it. And then he teaches him, of course, like the classic, you know, there's always like that extra anime skill you got to learn every season. So then he learns the new anime move where he's like, boom, you know, hit you with the numbness and, you know, pressure point style and i was like that's okay obviously that's you know that's his new hero technique so he's got to use that later and then of course we get to season three right crazy anime you know house fight they they, they threw the kid through the window once again you, you can get your arm broken you could just say like he did that yeah we're all in a brawl but he broke my arm he had me on the ground he broke my arm he could have done it but he didn't kid gets thrown through a window that's just crazy. That's how they start the fight. Fake cat noises thrown through a window. And just an amazing fight scene. Just people getting kicked and flipped and just Miguel's getting beat up by the bully from the first season. So he comes back because he learns martial arts. So now he's like another threat to them. And he was kind of effing with Hawk's mentality because Hawk ends up going from, you know, the nerd to like, you know, Cobra Kai. And Hawk, Hawk and Miguel's relationship is super cool in this show. Like they're always still buddies. And I thought that was super cool. Like even when they had the big fight. Um, in the forest, which was a great scene, and then the next day he's like, "Dude, we were enemies for a day," and it's like Cobra Guy for life. I was like, "That's a buddy. That's that's super cool." They're, they, you know, they were branching apart, but I was like, "That's still super cool. That was a cool moment." So I enjoyed all that, and they're just going through, and then Miguel has to like flip it around because he wasn't at his peak, of course, from the injury, and then he ends up doing it, and you know, he's like, "Oh snap!" Like Hawk turned, like he's he sees the error of his ways, and like him and Demetri are teaming up, and so he's like holy crap, we can make it, we can, we can beat the bad guys, because now they're in an anime, so he flips it around, and he beats up his old bully again, who had come back, like, for revenge, like, oh, now I've learned martial arts, so you can't top me, I can be your bully again, and he, he takes him down, and he's like, that's so good, that's just good, it's, it's good writing, it's good crazy anime writing, that's what it is, that's what this whole show is, and then, and then they have the reconciliation with Allie, which was a really good scene, especially I love the uh, part with Johnny where he was where he just hugs her and was like, I needed this. And she was like, I did, too. And I was like, that was actually really cool. And that's, of course, she was finally that final linchpin, which makes for, you know, all this time, you know, you, you love the girl. And then they have that <laughs> reconciliation together um, at the same time where, she, you know, she helps out Daniel and she helps out Johnny. And then there's like, you know, like, you know, he says, like, see you, Johnny. And then. Um, Johnny's like, he says LaRusso, he's like, Daniel, and I was like, hmm, and, you know, like, they even noted, noted in the show where she's like, oh, like, there's progress, point, you know, point for me, and it's just, it was so good, and that's what led them to truly reunite, because of course, after that, they, you know, it's like, all right, well, Daniel's about to leave with his wife, well, let's go get into some trouble at home, so of course, he's about to find madness, and then Johnny's like, F this, I gotta take care of some business. Crease is done. And he goes in and he finds his son there and it went full Star Wars. It's like his Anakin Skywalker moment and like Robbie turns around and is like, I'm turning to the dark side. And it was so good. It, it, it was Star Wars, it was anime, it was everything I didn't know I wanted in a TV show. And so then of course he fights Crease, and it's an amazing moment. And he, you know, he wants to kill him and then he says, you know, it's, Robbie tells him no, so he drops the side, and so they're about to fight, and it's, it's, just thinking about this is so ridiculous how much I love this show just from binge-watching it, but that's why it's got to your anime, like, that's what anime does, that's what anime does to you, it's like, it's on that level of ridiculousness, and I think that's a part of why I could love it, even if I didn't watch anime, I mean, everyone has been enjoying this show, uh, except for the people that consider it, like, super racist and stuff, but I don't, I didn't find a problem, I don't care, um, it's just so, it's so god tier anime it's amazing like you just all the dumb stuff like the lack of police like they talk about it and yet when he goes back home when daniel goes back home to the absolute madness of a brawl he they don't call the cops he goes to kill john crease or whatever crease's first name i don't even remember i don't know I, it might be john Kreese. i don't remember um it, crease he goes to kill him so of course it, it, it was just so good. 
It was just, it was just so good. Johnny gets there first, of course, he found Miguel. So that's, you know, they have the whole Star Wars moment. Robbie turns to the dark side. He's have, he has to deal with his son. He's, you know, he's, it, it's kind of funny. He's the one doing, like, none of the striking and stuff because obviously Robbie is attacking him because now Robbie sees his father as his worst enemy. It's like, if you were there, none of this would have happened. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have had the issues with Sam. I wouldn't have had the issues with Daniel. Like, I wouldn't have had to go to them to try to get back at you, which led me down this insane path of violence and just absolute insanity. So you are my worst enemy. And so he's blocking and stuff, and then, of course, he throws him up against the, uh, you know, he launches him against the lockers, he passes out, and then Kreese is about to kill him, and then, boom, here comes the karate kid, and he's like, you sent them to my house? And he was so mad. And he's just fighting, and he's just whooping on this dude. He gets tackled through, he gets, he ta Kreese tackles a man <laughs> through, a glass window and i know they do that in tv all the time where people don't get cut uh what well, was it season two yeah the beginning of season two crease put johnny straight through it through a mirror he kicked him into a mirror i'm like this dude would be all sorts of sliced up glass he fell into the bottom of the mirror and it broke on like he fell into the middle basically and like you have half a mirror breaking over your body you're all cut up but that's tv tackles a man through a glass window, barefoot. Okay, Crease was a barefoot man who thought, you know what's smart? I'm gonna tackle him through a glass window. Full glass window, I'm barefoot. I'm gonna tackle this man through this window right now. And that's what he does. He tackles him through a window. And then he's like, you know what I'm gonna do after I tackle this man barefoot through a full size glass window? I'm gonna murder him. I'm gonna murder him in this cheap ass strip mall. I'm gonna pick up this piece of glass. I'm going to diss Mr. Miyagi for the trillion time in this show. And I'm going to just kill this dude right here. He's in my way. I like I like Johnny. I'm still, like, I never wanted to do it like this. He gave him, he was constantly trying to do it like a million times. Like, please, like, come back. But he really does want Johnny to be there. It's like, even when he walked in on him, it was like three generations of Cobra Kai. Like, he wants this dude to be his son. Like, it's really interesting to kind of watch how many times of all the characters. Like, you see Kreese hates everything. Like, everything is like... Strike first, you know, like, no mercy. Like, that's his whole thing. It's no mercy. And then it's just, like, when it comes to his son, that, like, Johnny Lawrence is his son. It's so weird to watch. He's the one person he'll give a million chances to. Although, he was about to kill him. He was like, you know, this was it. Like, I didn't want to end this way, but I got to I gotta choke you out. And that's it. But then he's like, I'm going to cut you. I'm going to stab you with this, <laughs> this freaking piece of glass, and I'm going to just kill you now. And so, of course, they bring in the chosen technique. And so it's like, boom, he hits him with the pressure points under the arm, you know, everything's numb. And then they're about to do the final death blow. Like, he looks over, he looks at Johnny, and Johnny's like, hmm, like, kill him. And it was just like, this is crazy. This is crazy. And he's about to kill him. Like, he does this thing, he's like, he, he gets the nod, like, finish it. And he's just like, he's just about to end it. And I'm like, he's about to, kill, he's about to actually murder this dude over a martial arts city brawl like i don't even know like that's why this has got your anime like it, it just makes me so happy just talking about it because it's so stupid but it's so perfect like it just works every single step of the way every dumb thing i'm just like yeah i i'm following it i believe it i can believe it happens because it just hit a point and i think it had to be season two i think it had to be that end fight in season two where it was just like up this is anime this is this is live action anime right here it is cobra kai and it's perfect it, it is it's so perfect and everything they do is legitimately well done even though the show is solely based on the premise of i saw this thing and i don't want to hear an explanation and then that leads to every single argument in the entire series even though that is 100 percent factual like you cannot deny that that's what the whole show is based on somebody walked in on sam oh I, I don't know why Robbie was even mad, though. Like, he was mad. He was like, oh, I see how it is. I was like, dude, I messaged you, like, 15 times. You never once messaged me back. And you're like, I see how it is now. I was like, you've been gone forever. You didn't say a single word to me. And it was like, yeah, well, I was getting beat up. So, damn. I was like, you had your chance. And, and, and once again, it was like, it's not like they instantly were back together. But, whew, it was just interesting. And to get on the Sam thing, um, I don't hate her. I don't think it's her fault. Like I said, the Tory thing, that girl is nuts. That girl is basically crease. Like, that girl is crazy. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. I'm coming for you, bitch. In the middle of school, on the PA system, 
they must no wonder they were trying to get stingray because they clearly didn't have security like this girl announced it on the pa system and one security guard showed up and he grabbed the two smallest kids in that whole fight one teacher gets like hit with an elbow in the nose and flip the other teacher was very smart actually he was like i don't get paid enough for this he that was actually a very smart move but i'm like no wonder they were trying to get more security guards they had one guy <laughs> so it's just crazy tori's a psychopath and like uh, it's just so well done and i know like i said people hate sound like i watched um i forgot i think the youtube channel is called like watch party that dude straight up hates sam like everything he says i'm like he does not like this girl and i know some people don't like people say that she's narcissistic and she definitely has some faults don't get me wrong like the show does a good job to be like everyone has an actual thing that they've done wrong but the reason it works so well is because something they didn't do wrong just happened to happen you know like it was something that they were involved in where it was like that wasn't you know like something could happen to sam it was like that wasn't her fault that that happened it was just a shitty thing but then she'll take that anger like any normal human does actually and that's why it works so this show works so well she'll take like that the bs thing that just happened to her and she'll still she won't be able to like deal with it yet and then here comes tori like oh i was still in liquor i could steal all the silverware and it's like it makes sense that she blamed her but she shouldn't have gone for her for her purse and like actually pulled it like that was that touch that was a little too far and so it's just like oh that's so interesting and then of course you go through the stuff with you know the roller rink and things like that and it's like man it's interesting like you know that weird back and forth and then of course the kiss was you know that was an effed up thing for sam to do and as well as miguel who not that being drunk is an excuse but they both effed up and so it's like okay that's interesting and you know um another classic classic storytelling trope they have the moment where Robbie's like, no more secrets, right? All right, I actually got the medal from Miguel. I didn't want him to get points. Classic move where it's like, you know, I was kind of nervous, but actually had he said that, they probably could have done things a little bit easier. It would have been a simpler reconciliation between the characters, and then they probably wouldn't have ended up kissing. But he tells his story, and she pauses for a minute. And of course, right as she's finally about to tell the truth, the bell rings, and it's like, oh, okay, well, I'll see you later. And it's like, classic classic storytelling right there is like could have been solved she could have spoke up like a little bit faster could have still said it anyway but everybody does it in tv where it's like oh that bell because who you know because everybody loves school i keep knocking over my snorlax that's a snorlax by the way um because everybody cares about school like, oh the bell rang you know what i'm so so i was gonna a whole life changing moment i was about to tell you i was coming clean math though nobody does that in real life but classic storytelling and then, of course, she gets caught on the PA. And the funny thing is, that's that's actually why I like Robbie as a character. Because despite what happened to him, the shit he's been through is like that kiss was nothing. Because he was like, we can work this out. Even though he literally found out just before an all-out battle. And Tori's like, you kissed Miguel. And he's like, oh, dang. And he's looking at, yo, know, his girlfriend is like, I feel betrayed and hurt. Even when that's happening, the first thing he did was like, okay, please stop. <laughs> like, we don't have to do this. We can figure something out. Then he kicked that second Cobra Kai guy that came in. And that's when Miguel was like, hey. And so he hits him. And then that was it. And of course, Hawk was just like, yes. And then just all out chaos. And it was it was anime. And it was so good. It was so good. And then, like I said, season three, they're about to kill this dude. He was about to kill this man in a strip mall with a freaking death blow. A martial arts death blow. After he got, like, the nod of approval from his lifelong rival, technically. And it was just like, this is God-tier anime. That's what it is. And so then, of course, it doesn't happen. And they did their whole fight for the tournament and everything. And so now it's like, we're going to settle this in the tournament. You know, kids broke into your house. Beat the F out of your kids. You know, the Tori is an absolute psychopath and was probably going to try to murder your daughter again. Whatever. You know, I've done some weird stuff. I'm crease. I'm doing, you know, I, I do weird illegal things. But tournament, let's go. Tournament arc. That's anime. That is literally anime. Shown in tournament arc. I love Cobra Kai. It is such a good series. This wasn't really a review, but I just wanted to talk about it. It's God tier anime. There's that's not there's not much else to say. If you have any thoughts on the show, um, if you're a big Karate Kid fan, how you feel about it? Uh, if you're, if you're kind of like me, it was like, of course you know Karate Kid because it's it's so famous but you didn't really know karate kid and then this show comes in and it's just buck wild got your anime <laughs> all over the place i would love to know your thoughts and i will say this um despite not being a huge karate kid fan this show has done so well that the end of season three is so amazing period like i just don't see how anyone could get to the end of season three and just be like 
oh, that's kind of cool. They literally, they do not play like a lot of songs in the show. That's something I noticed. They saved one of the most iconic 80s songs ever for that ending. And they say, of course, they saved the drums. You know, when Johnny comes around, they had everybody come in and stuff like, oh, you know, all the people who were friends and then rivals and all their friends again. So it was like all the duos and stuff are all, you know, back together. And then Johnny comes in and they hit the drums. And I was like, this is so good. Like, I, I saw it a second time. I was like on YouTube and I just watched it. And I was like, man, this song gets me amped. Just listen to the song and seeing that. And it was just like, this is so good. You have Eagle, Eagle Fan Karate, which is a really good name. It's, it's dumb, but very funny. Um, and then Miyagi though, and it's like, it's so good. If you didn't know, there's also Cobra Kai merch. There's, you can Google it, but there's like a Cobra Kai website and you can buy the merch. They recently added, of course, the Eagle Fan Karate, um, headband and I think they have a face mask. And then I think there was something else. They may have done a t-shirt or, or a hoodie for, uh, Eagle Fan Karate, but they of course have stuff for all the different dojos and everything. But man. I'm excited for season four. It sucks it's going to take so long, especially with everything that's happening. They probably won't be able to get into production anytime soon, unfortunately. But, man, if there's a good anime, I, you know, I got to keep up with it. So that's 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 life now. Cobra Kai is the best live action anime I've ever seen in my life. So if you guys have any thoughts, please put them down in the comment section below. And, of course, thanks for watching.